friends. Happy rainy. What day is today? Thursday, I think. Um, I know we were going to plant this morning, but Miss Missy had a very lazy day today and did some other work. <laughs> so we didn't get to our planting, but we're going to save that so when it's, you know, nicer out and not so raining, we can actually put our, our plants in the window and they can get some sun. Um, I chose a really funny book today, and I'm going to do my best to give all the characters a different voice. Um, this has one of my favorite animals in it. It's called Substitute Groundhog. And we learned from Groundhog's Day that the groundhog determines whether or not we have spring on time, an early spring, or a late winter, or more snow. Um, and we've been using the groundhog to determine how long winter is going to last for a very, very, very long time. And as the kids in our classroom know, the groundhog sees a shadow. And if he sees a shadow, he gets super scared. And he runs right back into his little groundhog home in the ground. <laughs> Anywho, we're going to get to this book. I'm losing my marbles. My kids... I've lost my marbles. They ran away. They went somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to call this one Substitute Groundhog. And this was written by Pat Miller. And it was illustrated by Kathy Ember. And I love this book. It's super silly. <clears throat> the day before Groundhog Day, Groundhog woke up sick. His muscles ached. And his throat hurt. Oh boy. Groundhog felt so awful he went to see Dr. Owl. You have a bad case of the flu. You do, said Dr. Owl. You need hot clover soup and bed rest for two days. How many? asked Groundhog. Toot toot, said the owl. But Groundhog Day was tomorrow. Groundhog couldn't let anyone down because he was too sick to do his job. He tried to think of something to do. Look at Dr. Owl in there listening to his heart. He says, my friends, we had one in our dramatic play. Do you remember what that, what that is? You put them in your ears and you listen to your heart. Hmm, get those thinking caps out. It's called a stethoscope. On his way home to bed, Groundhog passed the Heidi Hole Diner. He saw want ads from all the neighborhood animals tacked to a nearby tree. Skunk was looking for a roommate. Again. Mr. and Mrs. Duck were returning north and had their nest for rent. I know what I'll do, Groundhog thought. I'll advertise. For a substitute groundhog. Uh-oh. Look at his note here. It says, Weather teller wanted. No experience necessary. Apply at Groundhog's Hole. February 1st, 10 a.m. Thanks, Groundhog. Oh, boy. Look at all these animals that showed up. By 10 o'clock, a line of animals waited to try out. Great, Achoo! said Groundhog with a sneeze. Surely one of you can do Groundhog Day for me. Mole was first. You have to go down in my hole, Groundhog told Mole. It's pretty dark down there. No problem, said Mole. My own hole is even darker. Mole got comfortable underground. Now come up and look for your shadow, Groundhog shouted. Mole peeked over the edge. His little eyes squinted. Well, Mole, what do you see? Mole poked to, spoke to a tree. Is that you, Groundhog? Groundhog blew his nose. This won't work. I need someone who sees well. I can see well, said a voice from high overhead. Groundhog looked up. 
and saw Eagle. Eagle swooped down. From that mountain ledge, Groundhog, I could see a bit of owl feather stuck in your fur. I'd say you have been to Dr. Owl recently. Wow, then surely you will have no trouble seeing your shadow, said Groundhog. Climb down in the hole and let's practice. Climb down, said Eagle. He looked at the entrance to the hole. Will there be room down there to stretch my wings? He stretched them wide, very wide. Groundhog rubbed at his scratchy throat. This won't work. I need someone who sees well and is not bothered by small spaces. Bear stepped up next. My own cave is snug and cozy. Great, said Groundhog. Climb down and let's practice. This is perfect, yelled Bear from the hole. It's even more comfy than my own cave. Come out and take a look, called Groundhog. There was no answer. Groundhog poked his head below the ground. Bear! Come look for your shadow. Uh-oh. What do you think happened with the bear? Look how he's dressed. I don't know. <gasps> the only answer was a deep, slow snore. Groundhog was frustrated. He needed a substitute who could see well, wasn't bothered by small spaces, and wouldn't fall asleep. Look at him. Sound asleep. Very cozy. I can do it. I can do it. Let me try. Squirrel bounced to the front of the line. Okay, said Groundhog. Go down in the hole. Come back up and look for your shadow. Squirrel leaped in. Whee! Then she popped her head back up. Groundhog said, See your shadow. Oh, I forgot to look. Down she went. She popped back up. She dropped back down. <laughs> I keep forgetting to look. Squirrel giggled. She popped up and down some more. This is fun, she said. But what Groundhog needed was someone who would stay, who would pop up and stay up. Oh, he's not having luck with any of these animals. By now, Groundhog was feeling even worse. He thought of his warm bed. Was he ever going to find a substitute? Remember, he's supposed to be in bed for two days, said the Dr. Owl. Howdy there, Groundhog. How about giving me a chance? Up stepped a strange looking creature. My name is Armadilla, she said. You're not from around here, are you? said Groundhog. Nope, I'm from Texas. Visiting my cousin Badger, she said. But I can do this job. I live in a hole. I like small spaces. I see my shadow just fine. And I will pop up and stay up. Do you see that armadillo? Armadillos like to live where it's nice and warm and dry, and they have a shell on the back of their body, just like a turtle, that keeps them protected. Groundhog wasn't so sure. Armadillo was a stranger from far away. What did she know about the weather here? But she did have all the qualifications for the job. All right, said Groundhog. Let's see how you do. Armadillo climbed down into Groundhog's hole. She poked her head up and looked around. Sure enough, she saw her shadow. If that happens tomorrow, tell folks that winter will drag on, said Groundhog. But if you don't see your shadow tomorrow, spring will come early. I got it, said Armadillo.
I think you're just the substitute I've been looking for, said Groundhog. You're hired! Thanks, said Armadillo. They shook paws. Then Groundhog climbed down his hole into bed. He sipped warm clover soup. He plumped his pillows and tucked his sore self under the flannel sheet. The next morning, the animals gathered early to hear what Armadillo would say. It was cold and crisp as the sun peeked over the forest. Badger served hot chocolate. Squirrel bounced and cheered for Armadillo. Eagle flew high above the trees. Muddy Mole looked sleepy and Bear was still in the bed. The animals grew quiet as Armadillo poked her head up and carefully looked around. There, on the ground, she saw the shadow of her tiny ears and pointy nose. Six more weeks of winter, she announced. Do you see the shadow right there on the ground with some pointy ears and a long nose? Armadillo dropped back into Groundhog's hole. Did you hear that, Groundhog? Six more weeks of winter. Groundhog groaned from his bed. How are you feeling, Groundhog? Armadillo asked. A little better, but I'd feel a lot better if it was spring already, Groundhog said. Spring already, said Armadillo. Say, that gives me an idea. Armadillo found Groundhog's suitcase. Get your gear together, Groundhog, she said. It's already spring in Texas. You can come home with me. Really? said Groundhog. He imagined himself rolling in warm grass instead of sneezing through six more weeks of winter. You bet, said Armadillo. Groundhog jumped from his bed. He grabbed his teddy bear and his toothbrush and tossed them into the suitcase. I've always wanted to see Texas. Do you think they have cowboy hats in my size? asked Groundhog. Sure as Texas has a lone star, said Armadillo. Together they walked through the cold to the bus station and their shadows followed them all the way there. Wasn't that a cute book? I know Miss Missy did some very silly voices, but I hope you enjoyed it. Bye, guys. We'll see y'all later and next time. <laughs>